Hello, my name is Galina Kurdina. I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I am a victim of psychotronic mind control attacks since January 2006. Uh, I was labeled with psychosis and delusional disorder by doctors Gratze and DF in June 2006. I filed lawsuits against the psychiatrist with the Superior Court of Justice uh, in Toronto. Uh, these lawsuits were dismissed in 2009. I filed appeals um, uh, with the Court of Appeal for Ontario and uh, there was an appeal hearing on the 13th of April. I want to read you uh, issues of this appeal hearing. Issue first. Uh, did the trial judge err in finding that the issue before the court was not about the existence of psychotronic weapons? The issue before the court is about existence of psychotronic weapons. It is a standard of care of psychologists, psychotherapists and psychiatrists whether they admit existence of psychotronic weapons or not. Doctors Gratz and Diev answer in their affidavits that they do not assume existence of psychotronic weapons. If they do not assume existence of psychotronic weapons, it means that they do not read scientific literature in medical libraries because there are thousands of articles in Medline Library, hundreds of patents and declassified documents about mind and body control. And doctors Gratze, Diev and Sugar were referred to this literature but didn't want to find and read it. What desire of Drs. Gratze, Diev and Sugar to study and use only DSM-4 in their work and neglect all the other literature in medical libraries may be called a criminal practice, but not a standard of care. It is impossible for psychiatrists not to read hundreds of journals and the latest research developments because textbooks are outdated before they are published. If they do not assume existence of psychotronic weapons, it means they do not take into consideration possible influence of psychotronic weapons on psych of people and label all people sick and healthy victims of psychotronic attacks with psychiatric diagnosis. If they label healthy people victims of psychotronic weapons with false psychiatric diagnosis, they fall below standards of care. Issue 2. Did the trial judge err in finding that the plaintiff just believed but didn't have proofs that psychotronic weapons existed and she had been the victim of them? Plaintiff doesn't just believe but has proofs that she is a victim of psychotronic weapons. Dr. Stenninger, duly qualified toxicologist, industrial hygienist, regulatory affairs and a doctor of integrative medicine, writes in her expert reports that plaintiff has been experiencing the effects of specific electromagnetic and radio frequency fields being targeted since January 2006. These frequency ranges react with specific nano and advanced microelectronics materials that are being created in universities and being utilized commercially by industry, medicine, pharmaceutical, government and military for monitoring communications and sensory applications. She writes that plaintiff has poisonous, toxic nanomaterials in her system that are used as uh, RD. IF MEU chips to send signals to her body. Did the trial judge err in finding that none of the plaintiff's experts were qualified to offer an opinion on the standard of care of a psychiatrist practicing in Ontario, since doctors DF and Gretzer uh, are psychiatrists and they practice in Ontario? Dr. Spenier, duly qualified and licensed expert in the field of clinical psychology. Joyce Myers, duly qualified, a qualified and licensed expert in the field of psychotherapy. And Dr. Steiner, duly qualified and licensed expert in the field of psychology and hypnotherapy, are able to opine on the standards of care for a psychiatrist in Ontario. All of them have knowledge and expertise in that field of practice. Furthermore, 
they have knowledge and expertise in the field of assessment and treatment of victims of psychotronic weapons as against doctors Gratze, Diev and Sugar, their uh, expert. Plaintiff cannot provide the court with an expert medical opinion from a psychiatrist in Ontario. She was referred to psychiatrists in Ontario in 2008-2009, but they refused to see her for some reasons. Maybe they didn't want to testify against, against each other. Maybe there were some other reasons as well. Such a requirement, an expert medical opinion from a psychiatrist in Ontario, makes it impossible for plaintiff to provide the court with any expert report. Uh, I was referred to the Mount Sinai Hospital um, in 2008 to, to a psychiatric uh, department of this hospital. Uh, there were several psychiatrists in this department, uh, maybe four or five, and all of them refused to see me. I was referred to a psychiatrist uh, in 2009. and. Uh, at the beginning he uh, agreed to see me and uh, asked me to go to my uh, physician family doctor and to get a referral. Uh, I did it. I went to my family doctor and got a referral and sent uh, it to uh, the psychiatrist. But in several days after receiving of this referral he refused to see me. Standard of diagnosis for psychologists, psychotherapists, hypnotherapists and psychiatrists in the United States uh, of America and Canada are the same and there cannot be special standards of diagnosis of psychiatric diseases in the province of Ontario. Dr. William Reed, a forensic psychiatrist in Horseshoe Bay, Texas and a past president of the American Academy of Psychiatry and Law writes in his article Law and Psychiatry. One of the biggest misunderstandings in clinical practice is the notion that there are different standards for different professionals treating the same patient for the same condition. Don't you believe it or at least don't rely on it. Primary care physicians and licensed clinical psychologists who treat depression, for example, must meet the same general standard of care as psychiatrists, provided they assume responsibility for the patient's care and uh, the patient has reason to expect the same clinical result. The standard of care is almost always predicated on the clinical situation, not on the specialty of the practitioner.